Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to part 4 of my video series of setting up my planning system for 2023. In my previous video in this series, I showed my new date header design for my daily pages. And towards the end of that same video, I mentioned that in my planning system, there are not just my catch-all planner and my planner planner, but there are also other elements such as my disk bound cash envelope system and my disk bound wallet, which I will be updating. Today, I'm going to tackle the disk bound wallet. Now I made this wallet on camera last year last year and I have the process video up on my channel as well as an update video. I will link both of them in the description box. But I am amazed that this has held up so well for an entire year, like an entire year. These are metal 1.5 inch discs. These are the same ones that I used when I made this wallet. And this is the only wallet that I have ever used ever since I made this last year and I really like it. And even now the entire wallet is still okay. It has not fallen apart yet, but of course it looks worn. And like this Elastic closure is dirty and it has already gotten frayed in the part where it rubs against the edge of the front covers as you can see here. I have never cleaned this by the way. The covers are still the same ones from the day that I made this wallet. This is just a photograph that I printed on tracing paper and then laminated afterwards. I also have on here my discount booklets for medicine and groceries because I am a registered person with disability. I also have some grid note paper and there are also these side loading cash pouches that I made for my cash envelope system and I just transfer these to the wallet and then back to the cash envelope system as needed. It's a very efficient system for me. Here is the cash envelope system that I made also last year and I also have a video about the process of making this which I will link down below. Today we are just going to deal with the wallet. Now I need additional holders for new cards, but these ones, these cards that are still here are still the same cards that I have. Although at some point during the year, I did make one or two new sheets of these card holders to accommodate the new cards as well. This new red card from Shell Go Plus is just another new card that I have not been able to make a new card holder for and we are going to do that today. Now these card holders have 100 GSM paper as a back sheet and for each card holder I used tracing paper. I printed the labels for each card on the tracing paper, cut them down to size, placed them on the backing sheet and then did the lamination. Today we're going to do something different. The size of all of the pages are exactly the same as my planner pages, which is the A5 Slim. It is the height of the A5 and the width of the personal, which means it is 210 millimeters tall and 95 millimeters wide. And I have the same size for everything in my planning system and because I have them all on discs and that is the key to efficiency in my specific case, so I can transfer content or inserts from my wallet to my cash envelope system and vice versa and even sometimes to my planner planner and to my catch-all planner I can do that in seconds without me having to obsess about how the pages will align <laughs> it's a breeze and I really really like it so to laminate I'm going to use my usual materials my handy dandy laminating machine and this same laminating pouches from Quaff these are 125 microns and the plan is to no longer use tracing paper for the card holders. Instead, I will use up these scraps of unused laminating sheets for the individual card holders. This will also give me a chance to use up all of the scraps because before laminating anything, I cut off the excess plastic and keep the scraps for small projects. And so now I have accumulated a lot. This is so much. This is a lot more than I can possibly use up. So let us use some of these scraps today. And I'm just going to measure which of the scraps 
would be the right size. Each card holder has to be 8.5 centimeters wide and 5.5 centimeters tall, which is just about the size of a single card. And after picking out which scraps are the right size, I did the trimming. I cut the lamination to 5.5 centimeters. And then when they are already cut down to strips, I cut them down further to be slightly longer than 8.5 centimeters. I intentionally left an excess temporarily. And I will just cut that off after the final lamination. And I will show you that later on. As for the labels for each card, I still printed them but no longer on tracing paper. I printed them on the 100 GSM paper, same as the paper that I will be using for the backing sheet, and this time I used color. My catch-all planner and my planner planner are set up to be very, very colorful, as you might probably have seen on part two of this series, which I will also link in the, in the description box. But this time, the colors of each label for each card was dictated by the dominant color of each card. It is not a super perfect color match, and I did not obsess about making it a perfect color match. I really just wanted color that will be more or less similar to the dominant color of each card. So I made one of the sheets first. I cut off three of the labels, and then the key really is to adhere this to only one sheet of the laminated rectangles that I cut earlier, and it should be adhered on the matte side of the laminating sheet, not to the shiny side, because the matte has the adhesive on it that we will be needing to adhere to the top layer of the lamination, but the shiny side needs to be without adhesive because that is where the card will have to be slotted in. Later on, I will show you how everything comes together. And then I made the backing sheet by cutting the 100 GSM paper to 95 millimeters wide, but only 200 millimeters tall because the sealed laminate at the top and at the bottom will make up for the rest to make the finished project 210 millimeters tall, just like everything else that is in my planning system. I used this glue pen to put a tiny dot of glue to adhere this paper label to the matte side of the laminating sheet. I also have a review of this glue pen on my channel and I will link that video in the description box. And then I used more of the tiny dots of glue to adhere the card holders to the backing sheet just to make sure that everything stays in place during lamination. And then I placed everything inside two sheets of laminating pouches, just like when we are laminating a normal project, with me again cutting off the excess lamination. And then after the lamination, I cut off the excess plastic completely on the left and the right side, but left an excess plastic on the top and at the bottom, 5 millimeters at the top and 5 millimeters at the bottom, so that the final project is 210 millimeters tall, just like I planned. Now, I was not very happy with this because it felt like the lamination between each card holder is about to come off. And when I looked closer, I found out that it was because I placed the card holders too close to each other. So there was not enough space for enough sealing. See, as you can see here, it is too short of a space. It can probably come apart quickly after some use. And then I remembered that when I made my previous card holders a year ago, I also noticed that but I forgot about it. I will redo this, but let me make another one using more of these labels. Same process, except that when adhering the card holders to the backing sheet, I will place the first card slightly higher up, but not all the way up, and the bottom card slightly lower down, but not all the way down, and the middle card holder will be right in the middle so that there will be more space between each card slot for more adhesion to happen with the lamination on those spaces. I hope that makes sense. 
This is actually how I made my card holders last year because I noticed the same problem then. I just forgot about this. So I laminated this, cut it down to the final size, and it looks like this one will hold better. And because we are now working with clear laminating sheets, a better way of placing dots of glue is to place the dots of glue where the paper is so that in the final laminated project, I will not see marks of glue behind the clear lamination. It is a tiny detail that most people won't even notice or won't even care even if they notice, but I notice and I know that it might bother me potentially. So I'm just sharing this tip just in case you want to do this as well. And just to show you that I really did not create any new scraps of laminating pouches with this project. Here, a single laminating pouch, which is eight and a half, eight and a half inches by 13 inches can laminate three of these without any excess. So with this project, I was able to use some of my scraps without creating even more scraps. And I'm happy about that. So I went ahead and made all of the card holders and also did the hole punching, which is the same method that I use for hole punching laminated sheets. I showed how to do it in part two of the series when I made my laminated dividers. So let me show you how the new card holders look compared with my old ones. The cards are now more revealed or more visible because I used clear lamination, but because the label is at the bottom and it's opaque, it still obscures the important information like the card, um, the card numbers. And the old one looks more muted. And the new one looks more colorful, in keeping with my general aesthetic for my planning system for 2023, which is to make everything very colorful. With this disc-bound wallet, it will be the cards that will give the color to the wallet, at least to the inside of the wallet. After all of the new cards have been placed in their dedicated labeled slots the entire stack is about three centimeters thick it is thick 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 but it has always been thick and that is a reality that i have to deal with and i made peace with that a long time ago now for the discs my current wallet the one that i have used for a year has 1.5 inch metal discs or it's 38 millimeter metal discs and i have more of them although none of the colors match really, but that's okay as long as they are the same um, diameter and the same material, I can make them match. And I took the old wallet apart and then after I placed all of the card holders on the 1.5 inch discs, I saw that it looked a little tight because I still had these booklets and these cash pouches to put in and the problem with tight discs is that with the closure on the covers the front and back covers tend to bend a little bit sort of give it they curve inwards a little bit which does not look good so i thought why not use my remaining 1.75 inch metal discs from the happy planner I took out these teal discs from my old transformer planner in part two of this series. And the other discs here are the remaining ones from the rainbow set, which I am now using for my catch-all planner. And so again, still in keeping with the colorful aesthetic of my planning system, I chose all of the different colors. And I think all in all, this is a better fit size-wise. Um, so, but let me just show you how the 1.5 inch discs look when compared to the 1.75 inch discs. It is not a big difference visually, but it makes a significant difference in the performance of my disc bound wallet. For the covers, I chose this photo. I got this from Unsplash and I will link this exact photo in the description box. I wanted a photo that was still colorful and still architectural to match my catch-all planner and my planner planner. 
And this photo seems to be the best that I could find that would also match my discs. The discs are a cold, like the colors of the discs on here are cold because, uh, no, not cold, but cool, cool colors because these are blues and greens. But the cover photo has a large amount of pink on it, which adds warmth to the entire look. And there's also a, a purple, a darker purple further on in the photo so that's okay I cut this down to size this is photo paper by the way and to make this thicker and stiffer I am once again adhering an additional 200 GSM card stock to the back before laminating and then I cut off the excess lamination completely on the side where the discs will go but left five millimeters of lamination on the other three sides and then after punching out the holes, I place them on the discs. I just need to figure out how to put this Pilot Birdie pen in here because I do not want to use my old white pen holder that is so, so dirty. And it looks so pretty. It is not as bright and bold as the covers of my catch-all planner and my planner planner, but it is still colorful and it is still architectural and it it goes with the colors of the discs that I have and I really, really like it. Now, because this wallet is always in my bag, it lives inside my bag. Actually, I know it will need some kind of, of closure and some kind of more protective external cover. My bag for every day is always extremely full, but it has a bag organizer in it. And my disc bound wallet always has its own little dedicated slot or pocket. I will link a what's in my bag video on the description box, but I know that this wallet still needs a closure and a more protective external cover. So I wanted to make a travel cover for it. Now I did purchase these clear cam snaps months and months and months ago and it needs a tool so that you can punch this onto whatever you want to put a snap closure on but I cannot find that tool I have that tool I bought it I know it's just right here but my my things are a hot mess <laughs> I will find it because I really want to use these clear cam snaps but for now let me just make the actual travel cover and I will deal with the cam snaps on a different day I'll have to physically look for the tool here and oh, well, anyway I have a bunch of these clear books lying around there are leftovers from an old archiving project I did many many years ago and I will be taking this apart so that I can use the covers only now I made the measurements. The travel cover has to be 23 centimeters tall, 12.2 centimeters wide. And the cover on the fore edge should be the same as the diameter of the disc, so it should be 1.75 inches. And as for the closure flap, let me just make it six centimeters. And if it is too wide, I can cut out the excess later. Let me just show you for now a close-up of this cover material. It is a semi-clear plastic. On the front, it has this ridged texture, but on the back, it is slightly matte, but I really, really like the front part. First, I cut off the part where the holes are, and then it left me with exactly 23 centimeters. And then because I did not want the rounded corner that remained, I just cut off that entire side and then I measured out the 12.2 centimeters and the key is to cut this part only partially not all the way because the goal is to just get it to fold like this and then the next thing to do was I measured out the 1.75 inches and also just cut it partially so I can fold this and then the final cut is to remove the excess and this will become the back of the travel cover which will go in the back of the wallet like this. It will go this way, right? Now to make the front cover, we don't need the flap and the 1.75 inches. So I will just cut down the other clear book cover to be 12.2 centimeters by 23 centimeters. And we now have both the front and the back to make a travel cover. 
Now to punch the holes, I need a template. So I'm going to use this scrap piece of paper that is the same height as my inserts, which is 210 millimeters, like I said, and then punch the holes in it using the Happy Planner punch. And then I just clip the template to the plastic using binder clips and then punch out the holes using a single hole punch and a pair of scissors. And now finally the travel cover can be placed on my disc bound wallet like this and the cam snaps should go here on the flap and I would have done this final step if I had the tool to do that but that's for another day maybe. I do hope that I find that tool. I have never used it except to try out how it works so I know how it works but I never actually created a project with it and I don't really want to have to buy a new one so I really will look for it and I will give you an update further along in this series. Now it does look a little loose partly because there is no cam snaps yet on here to keep it in place and also partly because the inserts in here the card holders really are not completely filling the discs. There is space on the discs definitely but further towards the fore edge, the inserts become thicker because all of the cards are there. And I think it will be okay once this has an actual closure with the cam snaps. I think, I think. We will see. And just to show you how the travel covers look or fit if they are on a planner that is exactly filled to 1.75 inches. Let me just place this on my catch-all planner which is exactly 1.75 inches thick and as you can see it is not loose here. It stays perfectly in place even without a closure. But I do need a travel cover for this wallet so for now this is have th this is gonna have to do this is how I will use it while I am <laughs> while I am looking for that darn tool for the cam snaps okay that is my video for you today please watch for part five of my series about setting up my planning system for 2023 which will be uploaded in a day or two so please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you have clicked on the notification bell so that you will get an alert as soon as that video is up thanks for watching bye